नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ व्हाट डज दिस डेटा से आई एम अजय प्रकाश नाउ टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट ड्रोन्स एंड ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी आई हैव चोजन दिस सब्जेक्ट टुडे फॉर अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक रीजन आई हैव सेड दिस सेवरल टाइम्स दैट मेनी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एक्शंस और इवेंट्स डू नॉट गेट रिपोर्टेड इन द न्यूज बिकॉज दे डोंट कैरी अ न्यूज वैल्यू how were such events are extremely important and i believe you should be made aware of this one such event is that the adani group has leaped frog into the drone technology and have started manufacturing military drones within the country for those of you who have been following the russian ukraine war you would know what an important role drones have been playing in this conflict the ukrainians used the turkish tb2 bayraktar drones in the beginning and inflicted heavy damages on the russian forces it's only of late about a month ago that the russians have changed their tactics and they too started using drones to knock out ukrainian target it's only after 4 5 months that now the russian army seems to be achieving its wartime objectives as you are aware drones have been used for targeted attack it could be buildings an enemy convoy even enemy personnel or a particular building one more thing in drone attacks is that the collateral damage is restricted now just how lethal these drones have become i will give you two examples about a month ago the russians took out a key army commander of the ukrainian army they managed to hack the commander's satellite phone and then through ai they they made a virtual phone call which looked as if his mother is calling him the commander picked up a phone and immediately the russians were able to get his location his coordinate and then they quickly sent in a drone and took him out the second instance is more recent a few days ago ayman al zawahiri the al qaeda chief was taken out by the us in a drone attack in kabul at the time of the drone attack zawahiri was strolling in his balcony on the 15th floor of his flat the us used a very specific drone for this purpose which would have cut zawahiri apart this ensured that there was no major collateral damage zawahiri's family who were in the same flat at the time of the attack were not harmed in this process so in all future wars drones are going to become a very important tactical weapon though the terms drone and uav unmanned aerial vehicle have been used interchangeably but the difference is now becoming quite clear the large military drones which fly like an aircraft are referred to as unmanned aerial vehicles while the small ones which have rotating fans on on top and operate like a helicopter those are being referred to as drones now where does india stand in the research development and deployment of this drone technology let's have a look firstly very quickly i'll give you a overview of the commercial segment in the drone technology The global drone market in the commercial segment is estimated to be about 28 and a half billion dollars. Now India's share in this market currently is around 4.25% which is round about 1.2 to 1.3 billion dollars. However, this market is going to grow at a very rapid rate. We are a country in which the largest number of startups have cropped up in the last 3 4 years who are working on drone technologies and every year more and more are getting added however all of them are today working on commercial applications and not on military applications there is a huge commercial potential for drones we have seen drones making deliveries they spray pesticides in agricultural fields mapping and reconnaissance 
Last year, Telangana government came up with a very unique application. The project was called Medicine from the Sky and drones were used to deliver the COVID-19 vaccines to remote villages. This pilot was so successful that now the government is going to use drones regularly for delivery of medicines to the primary health centers in remote areas. Since India did not have its own drone technology and neither there was anyone within the country developing it, so we did the next best thing. We looked at technologies to import. In 2016, with an eye on China and Pakistan, India entered into a dialogue with the United States for acquiring 30 to 40 Predator surveillance drones. The deal at that time was estimated to be around $3 billion. Now, apart from this requirement, there was a requirement of another 100 Predator drones from the Army and the Navy, which also was to be procured. The talks with the United States for acquiring these drones started in 2016 and today, 8 years down the line, these drones have still not been procured. Then all of a sudden, on February 23rd this year, there was a media report which said that India scraps the $3 billion deal to acquire Predator drones from the US will focus on indigenous UAVs. The reason given for scrapping the deal was that the cost was extortionate. And the other reason given in the media report was that India wishes to now develop its own drone technology. In April this year, India Today came up with this press report. It said that in view of the indigenous capability development, a high level committee has been formed to decide on the number of drones that the three forces would want to buy now as long as the requirements would be met by the Desi drones being developed according to top government sources. This is where there is a twist in the tale. When did this indigenous technology suddenly come up? And what are these Desi drones which they are talking about? So let's try to get some answers. For this, I'm going to show you one timeline. In 2015, Adani Defense Systems was established. In 2016, India enters into a dialogue with the United States for procuring 30 to 40 Predator drones. Then in 2018, another company, Adani Defense and Aerospace and an Israeli company, Elbit Systems, inaugurate the first private UAV manufacturing unit in Hyderabad. Now, if you observe, the, a, a company has entered into an agreement for uh, military drones. It has started manufacturing, but the country doesn't have drone rules. These only come up in August of 2021. And thereafter, in 2022, things start moving very rapidly. The certification scheme for unmanned aircraft systems was notified by the government on 26th January this year. Then on 23rd February comes the news that India is scrapping the $3 billion deal with the United States. And then in May this year, again Adani Enterprises signs an agreement with a small startup of Bangalore called General Aeronautics Private Limited and enters into the commercial drone space. The statement of Gautam Adani during the inauguration of the manufacturing unit is worth reading. In that statement, Gautam Adani said that he was very happy that the Adani group is doing its bit to build a more self-reliant India. This joint venture facility for manufacturing of UAVs is a testament of Elbit's commitment to our nation and the Make in India program. So the Adani group is now a partner of Elbit Systems of Israel and it's manufacturing the Hermes series of drones within the country. 
you can visit Adani Defense and Aerospace uh, website where you will find the pictures of all the drones which are being manufactured. These are essentially the Hermes drones of Israel. So this is the indigenous technology and the so-called Desi drones. So was this a beneficial relationship to India? Was it a good buy? Let's compare a few different types of drones and see for ourselves. In this table, I am showing the comparison between three different drones. The first one is the Predator drone from General Atomics US, the one which was being negotiated for procurement by India. The second one here is the Bayraktar drone, which have been used by Ukraines against the Russians. And incidentally, Pakistan has quite a few of these drones as well. And in the last column, we have the Hermes 900 drone, which is manufactured by Elbit Systems and is likely to be manufactured within the country as well. The TB2 Bayraktar drone is essentially a small drone. The max weight which the TB2 can carry is 650 kgs, whereas the other two drones can carry much larger payloads going up to over 1000 kgs. The range of this drone is only 150 kilometers, which means it is essentially a battlefield drone. The other two drones can go a well over 1000 kilometers. In length, width and height too, the Bayraktar is smaller. Maximum speed of all the three drones is over 200 kilometers per hour. Whereas the ceiling, that is the height to which the drones can go, the highest is the Hermes, which can go up to 30,000 feet, whereas the other two are, go, can go up to around 25,000 feet. And lastly, let us discuss the cost. There is a disclaimer. No manufacturer ever discloses the cost. And there is at times a wide variation between the models chosen. So the costs which I am mentioning here are indicative and have been picked up from various sources. Some of the sources I will show you as well. The Bayer Actor is the cheapest which is around 1 to 2 million dollars. The Predator drone, the MQ-1 is around 4 million dollars whereas the Hermes 900 is very expensive which is in the range of 18 to 30 million dollars. The cost of TB2 and the MQ1 Predator you can google and find out yourself. The Hermes 900 drone prices I have got from two sources. First is the Israel Defense Magazine which says that the Hermes 900 drone ranges from 18 to 30 million dollars depending on its configuration. And the second source which corroborates these prices is from Thailand. The Thai Navy recently bought the Hermes 900 drones. The cost works out to be around $15.8 million for each of the seven drones that were procured by the Thai Navy. The exact configuration of Hermes drones being manufactured within India remains unknown. But we had rejected the US drone saying that it was very expensive, which is around $4 million. The Hermes drone, as turns out from the media report, is not going to be cheap either. It is maybe costing us upward of $10 million each. But then there is a strong possibility that because of indigenization, the cost will definitely come down. And lastly, let's see what DRDO is, is doing in the area of drone technology. And can the Indian Defense Forces procure drones from DRDO. The first drone that DRDO is manufacturing is Lakshya, which is a target drone, which means that it carries a towed target and the missile is, is then fired to check the accuracy of the missile. The second drone is Nishant, which is an unmanned aerial vehicle, which is launched from a truck and used for battlefield surveillance and reconnaissance. 
the third one which is a bigger drone rustam one which is a true uav is under development but that too right now is being developed for surveillance reconnaissance target acquisition and tracking and image exploitation so currently none of these drones have weapons fitted to them so it's only the adani group which will remain a key supplier of military drones to our country that is still someone else gets into this exciting field of military drones thank you for watching i'll see you again next week with some other interesting data till then namaskar and goodbye